Welcome to Deluxe. While the rest of us are stuck home on the sofa, the world's glitterati are living it up on the red carpet. We take a tour of the most glamorous events on the VIP calendar. For film stars and heavyweights, the only place to be in May is on the sparkling French Riviera at Cannes, the world famous film festival. Can in some ways is the film industry, it's the place where everyone at every level of the industry actually sits and meets and the talking and uh, on the croisette is as important as anything else and the truth is that this is the place where the, the global market feels it has to come. Everyone is here. Um, when you're wandering up and down the croisette you're seeing the people that you need to see. Um, it's everyone who's anyone. Every year, the movers and shakers of the film world descend on the town for an international celebration of cinema, culminating in the awarding of the Palm d'Or, the highest award in the film world. This year, step by step, we have formed the image of a festival where all the big filmmakers of our time are going to meet. I'm always very wary about trying to decide at the beginning of the festival um, what's going to be the big hit. Um, I've got a feeling there might be a surprise in there. Although people have come here to launch their films or careers, the real action is happening at the parties that go on every night. The annual Dolce & Gabbana Bash is always guaranteed to be one of the biggest parties at Cannes. And the 2008 prestigious event was no exception. The Italian fashion pair known for their ultra-sexy glamour showed their more than 1,000 guests the true meaning of La Dolce Vita. I am enjoying so much Cannes, yes, it's beautiful. I went to see a film and uh, I love the, the atmosphere, all the people there are here and uh, I love to be on my boat, to enjoy my boat, and that's it, all together is fantastic. And of course, a Dolce & Gabbana party is the chance to show off your best outfits. And here the fashions ranged from body-conscious dresses to the gypsy look. Many of the men wore white skinny trousers or jeans, a big trend for men on both the Italian and Paris catwalks. It's so much fun. I just love to play with it and have a good time. You know, it's like playing dress up as an adult. It's, there's no better time. Lindsay Lohan, Kate Hudson and American singer Cassie wore body-hugging dresses cut to the thigh, while Dita Von Teese shone in her signature pin-up girl look. I'm, I'm self-styled, I do my own hair and makeup, and it's just, I sort of do it the same way I've always done it for 17 years, so I've kind of just, I've got a formula that I think works for me, that's my secret. Party girls Natalie Portman and Juliette Lewis joined with other guests as the party rolled on into the wee hours of the morning. Coming up, American stars have their time to shine. Surely the biggest party in the world happens every year in Hollywood at the end of February when the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences hosts the annual celebration of all that is film, the Academy Awards. It's the only award around, really, that's got a connection to all the great stars of Hollywood of the past. I mean, it goes back, you know, Bogart won an Oscar, Ingrid Bergman, Clark Gable, uh, Catherine Hepburn, James Cagney, you know, so it gives you a tradition. So when you win something like that, it's not just an award you're getting, but an award with a lot of tradition behind it. The Oscars were conceived by Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer studio boss Louis B. Mayer in 1929 as a way to attract more audiences to cinemas. Since then, the Oscars have grown into the biggest celebrations of the movie world. It's just become a symbol of Hollywood glamour, I think, um, and uh, it, it's just a symbol that everyone knows and everyone responds to amazingly. You've just no idea how overwhelmed people get when they see one in front of them. <laughs> 
After the Academy Awards ceremony finishes, at the post-Oscar parties, they'll strike up the band and start to let go of the tension. Winners will come to celebrate their victory, losers to drown their sorrows. Some will head for Elton John's bash, others the Vanity Fair affair. But the hotspot for the Hollywood elite will be the no expenses spared Governor's Ball. Held just steps away from the site of the Oscar show, the gala event thrown by the Academy itself is where telecast ticket holders usually head straight after the best picture has been named. Every year, the guests enjoy the cuisine created specifically for the event by Master Chef Wolfgang Puck. This year, for the first time, we have organic vegetables. Well, we say we have organic vegetables. We've been using organic farmers for 25 years, but this year our motto is, the Oscars are going organic. After the 2007 Academy Awards, Martin Scorsese, Al Gore and Jennifer Hudson hit the Governor's Ball in Hollywood style. Martin Scorsese's arrival prompted applause from onlookers. It's so exciting to see Marty win. I think it's really nice and I think in a way Marty won for, won for a body of work because he has such an extraordinary body of work and people admire and respect him and it was thrilling to see him get his due. Carrying his Oscar to the party, Babel composer Gustavo Santa Olala looked happy. Best Supporting Actor winner Alan Arkin was in good company, with the likes of Francis Ford Coppola and George Lucas standing just feet away. But on Oscar night, the Governor's Ball wasn't the only party in town. And the next hottest party was the Vanity Fair party, with all the world's top celebrities in attendance. The winners, with a tight grip on their Oscar statuettes, were the centre of attention as they arrived at the West Hollywood Bash. After all the excitement of the show, Helen Mirren just wanted a moment to unwind. Well, you know, that's, it's a moment of incomprehension, really. I mean, um, I mean, certainly relief. Uh, at last, it's it's over, if you know what I mean, because it's been a long time coming. I've been a, it's been a long journey here, and um, so that that was uh, it was a very proud moment, definitely. Equally happy was Jennifer Hudson, who won the 2007 Best Supporting Actress Award for Dreamgirls. As always, the night was full of dazzling star power. And for the chosen few who are lucky enough to attend, it's a night that they'll remember for the rest of their lives. It's fantastic and it does, it does feel you know, amazing to have been here again and to have experienced this night. And it was such an incredible show. It really was great entertainment, honestly, to be in that room and they really pulled all the stops out. It was just a wonderful night. Also attending the Vanity Fair party were a host of A-listers including Madonna, rapper Kanye West, actress Penelope Cruz, and Victoria Beckham. Well, I met, um, let me see, Nicole Kidman, Meryl Streep, um, Leonardo DiCaprio, Mark Wahlberg, and, um, yeah, yeah, and Jodie Foster. Not to be outdone, Elton John has started his own annual Oscar night party to raise funds for his favourite AIDS charity. Over the years, Elton John's AIDS Foundation has raised over $150 million to provide grants to worthy HIV AIDS prevention programs in 55 countries. This year's ticket to the party ranges from three and a half to five and a half thousand dollars. As far as the uh, performance, it's pretty exciting. Elton's coming with this entire band, which we haven't had for a number of years. So, I mean, he's astounding regardless, but when the whole band's in the room, it's pretty moving. And then we have a couple surprise artists that are going to perform with them, uh, one of which is Mary J. Blige. That's the only one I'm allowed to tell you. <laughs>
The other big annual party in the American entertainment industry is, of course, the Grammys, which gives the stars of the music world their own moment in the sun. I think that it's, it's definitely the most prestigious award you can win as a musician or an artist. I mean, it's like the Oscars of music. And so winning this is, is a huge deal, I think, in any artist's life. For many of the stars attending the Grammys, they can't believe that their childhood dreams have come true. But I just remember when I was a kid, like um, I would literally like sit there and it was, um, I would make my family like watch it because we had like one television in the living room, you know, so we'd, I'd make everybody, it was like, no, we're watching the Grammys, this is my night of the year. So I'd make everyone watch it. I personally like the Grammys a lot because, I mean, it, it, it's just something from, I think when I was a little kid that I thought it was so cool to have a situation where artists are, um, you know, admiring other artists. As the artists arrived, suavely suited rappers mingled with rockers in ripped jeans. Cheers went up from the fans every time anyone, recognizable or not, walked by. Winning a Grammy, the most prestigious music prize in the music industry, is the greatest accolade any singer or musician can hope to receive. As the pressure leading up to Grammy night fever mounts, nominees pondered the meaning of winning one of these precious trophies. It was not in my dreams to be here. I, I mean, I, I, I've, I've been... I was born in a very little village in, in Italy, um, 31 years ago, and... Uh, my dreams, my dream was to be in Sanremo Festival and I couldn't believe when I received, you know, this nomination. Um, grazie. <laughs> well, it's just the biggest music award show ever and um, it's my first one. I've never been before. They asked me to present and I was honored to be here and I'm going to sit in the audience and enjoy it like I would normally be watching it on television at home. So I'm very excited. Oh, it's the biggest, this is the biggest award show in music. This is the top of the pyramid in music, and uh, it gets no better than this in music. On the music industry's night of nights, hearing your name being called out is the sweetest sound of all. Coming up, we go in search of carnival, meet the world's coolest men, and unwind by a peaceful English river. the world, the beginning of the Christian period of Lent is marked with a carnival to celebrate the earthly pleasures before heading into a period of fasting. Although carnival has lost much of its religious connotations, it has turned into a tradition of extravagant street parades all over the world. At the start of the 2008 carnival in Venice, Thousands of people crowded the canals, bridges and squares of the medieval Italian city. The Venice Carnival is an attraction for tourists and locals alike. Partygoers stroll around the Venetian streets wearing masks and extravagant costumes. The carnival is something to see every year. It's the first time that I've come for the carnival, and I think you have to come here at least once in a lifetime. At noon, hundreds of people gathered in St. Mark's Square to watch the American rapper with a turbulent past, Coolio, perform the Angel Flight, a swoop down from a 99 meter high bell tower that kicked off the carnival celebrations of the Italian Lagoon City. Julio, as the Flying Angel, was a playful reinterpretation of a tradition that has always seen a young woman dressed in white as the angel gliding down from the Campanile Tower. The rapper swooped down from the Basilica Bell Tower, minus the wings, riding a huge golden O, the last letter of the Italian word Angelo. While Venice Carnival may have the history, and Rio's Carnival has its dancing, in France they have the beautiful Côte d'Azur, 
and its magnificent annual Mardi Gras in Nice. At a recent Nice carnival, the celebration started with the traditional flower parade, a string of magnificent floats decorated with thousands of fresh flowers. On the floats, models in glittering dresses smiled as they threw flowers into the crowds of spectators along the Promenade des Anglais. The theme this year is the King of Euroland. We all get together to bid a beautiful farewell to the franc and to receive the euro with joy and hope as a sign of the future. In the evening, the extravaganza moved on to political themes, and on this occasion, it was King of Euroland. This was in celebration of the move to accept the euro as the common European currency. Cartoonists from Europe and America's leading newspapers were asked to design floats based around this idea, and they came up with some spectacular results. French cartoonists created the Euro Convinced, while the British Financial Times presented the Euro Skeptic Vision. Finally, cartoonists from the New York Times joined with colleagues from Russia and Japan with their entry, the Euro Observers. More than 20 floats and 240 costumed characters took part in the festivities and over 1.2 million people joined in the fun of carnival. What could be more exclusive than being nominated the Man of the Year by men's fashion bible GQ magazine? At the 2008 annual Man of the Year bash, stars gathered in London for their annual dose of celebrity backslapping. The award started 11 years ago and we thought that it would be great to have an award ceremony which really represented everything that GQ was about. There are lots of award ceremonies in the country, but they tend to celebrate music or film or sport, you know, individual disciplines. And we thought it would be great to have an award ceremony that celebrated lots of different things. Hosted by the unlikely combination of Sir Elton John and Lily Allen, plenty of big names showed up to give their pals a pat on the back and an award to go with it. Brandon Flowers, the lead singer from the band The Killers, was named the most stylish man of the year. While Josh Brolin, the star of No Country for Old Men, took out the honour of being the international man of the year. I'm happy to be here. I, I, among you know people like Robert Plant, who I haven't met yet, and Chris Martin, and you know they say they're part of it, and I go, okay, I'll be there. Entrepreneur of the Year went to Chef Gordon Ramsay. Other winners included singer Tony Bennett, who was glad to still be inspiring people in his later years. You know, I, I've learned that you never stop learning. I, I, I have so much to learn yet. And Elle McPherson was invited to nominate who her ideal GQ man is. Everybody's been asking me that. I'm sorry I can't say anything more exciting than my two sons, Flynn and Cy, 10 and 5, who are absolutely delicious. Next, it was America's turn to celebrate their GQ Man of the Year Award for 2008. The big party in Los Angeles brought out leading man winner Leonardo DiCaprio. While in the category of breakout actor, Mad Men's John Hamm walked away with the trophy. Uh, it's, it's an incredible honor. I mean, if you just look at the, the people that, that, I'm, that I'm listed with, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a significant uh, group, to say the least. And. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's nice to be, to be mentioned as, as one of those four uh, and singled out in that respect. So I'm tremendously happy and honored. Jason Stratham, who won the Best Action Hero title, chuckled over his win. Apparently it means I'm the, uh, the singled out action hero. <laughs> that's, that's the label I got anyway. Um, so um, yeah, it's great. I'm, 
you know, I'm in a magazine with some uh, some people that I've looked up to over the years uh, with great respect. You know, Sean Penn and you know the presidents there, Michael Phelps. You know, to to be attached in in that sort of a sort of very high caliber crowd is a is a is a great honor. Zac Efron was among the night's guests, and he said he hoped to meet Barack Obama. I just want to shake his hand. I think he's done an amazing job so far. He hasn't even started yet, and I think he's done a great job. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, it's great to be here and, and showing our support. He's definitely a man of the year. After all that partying, it's good to take some time out in the English countryside. And where better to take in the sun and some exercise than the famed rowing races at the Henley Regatta. Set in tranquil surroundings in Oxfordshire, the famous Henley Royal Regatta is the quintessential English event for the rowing fraternity and is a highlight of the English summer social calendar. It's a chance to put on traditional clothing and return to a more relaxed time while the rowing competition takes place. Organisers say there's nothing quite like it anywhere else in the world. Of course, it's the, there's the social scene. There are some people who are here purely for the social aspect. It's part of the Wimbledon Ascot Glyndebourne uh, season. Uh, and everybody, no matter who they are, they choose to dress up and make it such a colourful spectacle. It's the traditional elements of Henley that make it such a unique event. People can meet and socialise with others interested in rowing, while athletes compete against each other at the highest level. When we organise this event, we try and maintain the facade of an Edwardian English country garden party. And that's one of the things that makes it so special. So on the surface, things appear to be unchanging, and in a changing world, that's quite important. Organisers say it's important to get the balance right between the social and the competitive sides of the event. We work very hard to try and maintain the balance between this unchanging view on the bank because people come back here year after year and they love the way that it appears to have that same sense of history that very little appears to change. On the water, we are very much aware of the needs of the athletes of today and we try and cater for them and for their needs uh, to enable them to compete at the best possible level and we do that as best we can. While the rowing cups and competition remain a key part of the Henley Regatta, it's the Englishness and historical nature of this event that keep it a major part of the British social scene. When the world is your oyster, there's a wealth of exciting parties and events that could be yours, as long as your name is on the list.